Hey guys, so uh, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be going on a new ride, it's an OHV trail called Lower Oso, or sorry, Upper Oso. And um, this is the first ride on my new tires. Um, the rear tire is the same one I did before, the Dunlop D606. And uh, I'm trying out the Pirelli MT21 on the front. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to get some more saddle time on them and uh, then let you guys know what I think. Um, not a lot of people out there comparing the two tires, and I think um, there's some significant differences between the front tires of the Dunlop and the Pirelli. So, trying out this combo, it's uh, it's not a unique combo. Lots of people do it on the CRF 250L. Um, so obviously it's popular for a reason, but I want to test it out and find out exactly what I think and how it handles in the terrain that I ride. Most of my riding is hard pack um, and rocky stuff. This particular t trail has a lot of uh, loose rocks and... Um, really like small pebbles. There's certain areas where it's like almost gravel, um, but smaller rocks and um, tends to be pretty tricky. And um, uh, I took this ride pretty slow. Um, from my experience, new tires um, don't quite have uh, all the traction that they should yet and you kind of got to break them in a little bit and soften them up so um, it was a little washy um, slipping around a little bit so I took it pretty slow um, also I'm not familiar with this trail so um, didn't want to have any surprises come up on me um, but uh, yeah it was a fun ride um, I used the hitch carrier um, to come up here and do this ride, and um, that uh, is a stressful um, thing to do. If any of you guys have a hitch carrier, you know it's just kind of it's just sketchy. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, I secure the bike on there well and use um, four points of um, tie down, four tie downs. Um, the hitch carrier recommends that you use five, but I can't imagine where you put the fifth. Um, you could maybe secure the hitch carrier to the vehicle, and that could be your fifth point of contact. Um, that's not going to give me any more security. Um, I did buy a stabilizer, a hitch stabilizer, um, that just bolts on um, at the tongue. Uh, of the receiver and bolts clamps down below the receiver um, connecting the receiver to the hitch carrier and that um, reduced the tilt um, and rocking of the carrier a lot so it gave a little bit more peace of mind this time um, my hitch carrier did come with a anti-tilt device I guess you'd call it I never quite figured out um, how to install it and there weren't any good videos on it and I didn't want to do it wrong so I went ahead and bought a uh, separate stabilizer that was just more straightforward in its design and American made steel and um, really good product so I um, tested that out today and it gave me a little more peace of mind but using that carrier is just it's not ideal. I, I wish I had a truck, but um, I'm not in the position of buying one. Both my cars are paid off, and uh, I just don't see the point in buying a truck just to uh, transport my bike to further trails. But, um, you know, uh, I want to use the carrier, and I want to do uh, rides further away from home, do some traveling rides, do some camping trips, and... Um, 
you know, that just seems like a lot of fun to me, and it explores your bounds, you know, um, I don't have a ton of riding in my, the valley that I live, so, um, you gotta get outside, and you gotta go further, and find those cool spots, and I wanna go to Northern California, and I wanna go to Utah, and I wanna go to Montana, and so, do I trust the carrier to do, you know, thousand mile drives, um, I don't know. Uh, I just, I hope as I use it more, I'll become more at ease with it. But uh, I'm afraid that, uh, you know, the worst case scenario, you know, you, the bike falls off the carrier on the middle of the highway or freeway. <laughs> I just can't imagine um, that happening. It would just be, it would be awful. Um, but uh, just got to secure it well and put your mind at ease and stop staring back at it. You know, who knows, maybe people with trucks, when they load up their bike, they feel the same way. They're always staring back at it, making sure it's not falling over. But at least, you know, in that circumstance, if, if it falls over, it falls over in the bed of your truck and, um, you know, not on the in the middle of the freeway. So I thought today um, was just a really cool ride. I mean, the views are just really, really epic up here. You get a whole view of the valley as I as they get higher in elevation and this trail just keeps going and going it um i had to edit down the video i usually like to do one continuous clip of my rides but this is just too long of a ride and uh didn't want to bore you guys to death and the scenery is kind of you know it's kind of um monochromatic um you know it's not very lush but it has its appeal you know there is a cool uh, aesthetic to the Los Padres National Forest and um, it's kind of an interesting forest because it's not really a forest it's not really a desert <laughs> it's something in between um, but it really has a, a cool aesthetic and when you get up to the top of this mountain you can see the the trail there up ahead it just switch, switches back and forth up the ridge and uh, that's where we're headed right now and uh, you get up to the top and it just has these beautiful views of the valley and uh, the wilderness beyond, you know, the Los Padres National Forest is huge and um, it's interwoven with trails and forest roads. Um, unfortunately, most of them are closed. Um, our, our riding lands are getting more restricted and more restricted over time. Yeah, which is too bad, and uh, I, I hope that changes, but <clears throat> I don't foresee it um, going the opposite direction. I think it's just going to keep getting more restrictive, and there's a lot of people out there that uh, hate that we ride um, out, out in nature, and they want to shut us down, so um, we got to be um, just as loud as they are with our voice of support, and... Um, you know, if you guys can support um, foundations and things that um, help keep these trails open to us, uh, I think that's a good use of your money if you're looking to donate some money somewhere is to these different organizations. Um, and uh, they, they go out there and they speak for us. Um, I found this, this cool little road here, this offshoot, it goes up and I edited the footage out of it, but uh, there's a campground here behind me, and it looks like somebody started a fire there maybe a few years back, so it's all burnt, but there's um, picnic benches and fire pits, and it would be a cool place to come up and moto camp one day um, if I ever do that. I have the rear rack on my bike, and uh, I have tried to moto camp once, and the one time I did try, it was like a ultimate fail. Um, <laughs> I got out to the spot in this really cool secluded spot and started drinking beers and had uh, one too many beers to ride back. You know how that is. And then I uh, night started to approach and started setting up the tent. And one of my tent poles broke on me. And, uh, you know, um, wouldn't have been a big deal. I've camped without a tent 
you know, it's not it's not a big deal at all. It's kind of nice camping without a tent, but there that time of year when I did it, there was swarms of flies and bugs and stuff like that. So I was just going to be miserable without a tent. So I had to turn around and go home, even though I had one too many beers. Um, it was not a good situation. Um, so hopefully next time it turns out better. Yeah, look at these views. It's just, so uh, this is facing uh, the ocean. You can kind of see it over the ridges there. And um, the lake there in the distance. And uh, camera doesn't quite do it justice, but it was really, really a nice view today. So I've been thinking a lot about um, whether or not to get another bike. Um, I really like the Beta 500 RRS and I've ridden it a couple times now. A friend of mine has one and um, he's kind enough to let me ride it when we go on rides. I really love the power. Um, power is a bit excessive. It's kind of kind of unnecessary but it um, it's really a lot of fun to have that much power but I just have to ask myself what kind of riding I want to do you know for forest roads like this um, trails like this that are mellow and um, not very technical there's really no need to be on anything else other than the 250L I mean this bike is just perfect for this type of riding it's comfortable and reliable and has enough power to get you where you're going. Um, so I'm going to keep noodling on it. You know, I'm not, not quite convinced that I need to get another bike. Just have to be content with um, the 250L. And uh, I really do love this bike. I'll never sell it. Um, and it's going to take me to places like this. And... Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, the views, and um, I'll see you next time.